the cinnamon bun. Funny story. So because of the burst pipe disaster last year, that floor in the room that has previously been my study or office has been damaged and it needs to be refitted. And for a while I've been thinking about switching up the configuration of my house um, because ever since I moved in I've had it set up this way where I use the one bedroom as my study um, because I, at the time when I set that up I worked from home and then I have this like one big room basically the living room set up as like a studio apartment almost so I've got the living area and then I've got my bed over there um, and then there's like a little bathroom and a little kitchen and um, I don't really, I still do sometimes work from home, I obviously film from home and stuff but most of the time I try to go to my co-working space to work and so for a while I've been thinking why don't I try switching it back or switching it up and moving my bed and making that an actual bedroom and then moving my desk through here. Honestly largely just because I'm fucking sick of this place and you know I've been here for several years and I find it really hard to motivate myself to like tidy and organize and repair and just like decorate and take care of it um, to the extent that I want to do that and I know that I'm going to be here for at least a little bit longer. I was like why don't I try just like moving the furniture around and see if that is like a nice change and so I've been wanting to do that for ages but because the floors needed refitted in there I was like well there's no point moving all of that stuff and flipping it around and then arranging everything like I want it when I'm gonna have to move it all out anyway to get the floor refitted so I should just wait until the floor is refitted um, and that was meant to be getting done yesterday no today yeah sorry today days um, so the the joiner was meant to come today to refit that floor and so yesterday as you have seen, I moved all the stuff out of there. But in, in, a, in a turn of events, um, we've had to cancel that floor getting refitted because um, it seems like I've got scarlet fever. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. So... <sighs> so I've been sick for about a week. I thought it was like... A really bad cold or flu or covid or something like that and i felt like absolute shit like just was in bed basically for like three or four days and then i started to feel a little bit better but i was still basically just staying home to not infect people and also to recover and I had all these flu symptoms they were going away i was feeling a lot better um i still had this like residual cough but like my head and my sinuses were a lot better um, but in the last few days I was like, hmm, my neck and my chest are like quite itchy and I don't know what that's about. Like it, it, when it first started I was like, oh, maybe my skin's just dry or something. But then um, I was like, no, that's that's like a rash. I'm instinctively cooling it with my cold hands because it's really warm and itchy. A week ago I had to cancel my therapy appointment because I didn't want to get my therapist sick. And he was like, uh, be careful, there's scarlet fever going about. And I genuinely thought he was joking. And then I was like, hmm, what's this rash? And then I like noticed that it had gotten quite pink and that my face was pink. And I was like, wait, what are the symptoms of scarlet fever? And I Googled it and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> so I was meant to be hanging out with Pete last night and uh, he ended up bringing me groceries and having a look at me instead because as a nurse, he has looked after patients with scarlet fever. I think he was sceptical but then he came and looked at me and um, looked at the rash and looked at my tongue and stuff and was like mm, yep I can't come near you. <laughs> Sorry we're not hanging out tonight. You need to be on antibiotics because you're contagious. So it's almost 11 a.m and I have an appointment with my GP. I need to go in and get looked. I've already spoken to them over the phone Um, I need to go get looked at and I'm really hoping they're just gonna give me some antibiotics because I don't feel too bad, like I say, but I also am worried about like infecting people and I don't want to go out and I don't want to get people sick. So basically with scarlet fever, the, the rule is um, you have to isolate for the 24 hours after you start antibiotics and then after that you should be safe. I'm so gutted the floor is not getting refitted today because I'm so sick of it and I moved all that stuff out and now I'm stuck at home in all this chaos because I've moved everything from that room into this room so it's not a nice place to sit and just chill at the moment but I'm thinking 
if I feel up to it and I'm stuck at home anyway for at least the next 24 hours, maybe longer, then I might just try swapping things over. I might try setting up my desk over there and moving the bed out of the way and I'm probably gonna have to put the bed in the other room just space wise, there's nowhere else to put it until we could reschedule to get the floor refitted but I'm hoping that if I do that then it shouldn't be too difficult to move the bed out and store it in a different room while the floor is getting refitted but like what better time to undertake a big house project? <laughs> well, what for me is a big house project than when I am stuck inside with scarlet fever. <laughs> oh. Well, um, the doctor that my rash and uh, tongue seemed quite non-specific and took my temperature and that and said I didn't seem particularly unwell, but swabbed back of my throat so I'll get results at some point about that and um, she said you don't seem particularly unwell but if you want me to still prescribe antibiotics then I can and I was like yes please because I think I am past the worst of it but I'm still worried about getting other people sick and I've isolated for a week already and I just want to be able to get back to life <laughs> so so I went in past the pharmacy on the way home and got that. <coughs> don't feel great, to be honest, I do feel kind of run down. So I might have some more food and tea and take some paracetamol and see how I feel. I might still just do this house stuff because I'm bored. <laughs> I'm gonna start trying to move the desk through here, um, even though I haven't managed to get the bed through yet because all that office stuff is in the hall and I'm gonna need to move that to make space to actually move the bed through. I may have made a grave mistake. <laughs> I've, I've shuffled it around several ways now and I've even moved the sofa and I just don't know if there's a way that I can get this through by myself or maybe it needs to be dismantled. It either needs two people or it needs to be dismantled and um, I think I've maybe got the IKEA instructions somewhere and I also hate building furniture and so taking it apart and putting it back together again is not super appealing um fuck
All right, I stopped and took a break and had some lunch. <coughs> I think I've pretty much given up on being able to move this through as it is built. It's just that, it's just that really tall headboard bit. It's just too big. So, but I did find the IKEA instructions. Thank you, past Rachel and Marie Kondo, um, because I've just got like one box of DIY stuff over there. That one there. That's all my like house and DIY stuff. So. Um, I put it in there, so that's good. So, to build this, and I assume to dismantle it, I need hammer, check, crosshead, screwdriver, check, two people. Close enough. Oh! Oh my god. Oh, this is so stupid. thinking about how if I dismantle this it doesn't make sense to build it in the other room until the floor is redone otherwise I'm just gonna have to dismantle it again which means I'm just not gonna have a bed until the floor is refitted but I can sleep on the sofa tonight and then after that I won't be contagious anymore so I can always stay at peace if I have to. early evening. God, there's still so much to do with all this and I've been wanting to like declutter and reorganize all of my desk and study and office-y stuff for ages and I'm like, well, I should do it now. Um, but I don't really think I've got the energy, so, so I think I'm going to leave that for now. But I am, I've got just two wee boxes of like all the stuff that like was on my desk, like all of my regularly used stuff. So I'm gonna unpack that, which means I'll actually be able to work again. And I think I'll call it a day. Okay, so, it's a few days later, all of yesterday and half of today I was just hanging out with Pete and still just taking my antibiotics, um, which I wasn't expecting me expecting to hit me so hard, to be honest. Um, I've just felt really exhausted and kind of run down and phlegmy and gross, so I haven't really gotten anything done on this, but I'm feeling up to doing a bit now. So I I kind of jumped into this without deciding like the parameters of this project. Yeah so I've had to bump the floor refit forward by a few days um, 
been speaking to the joiner and I'm hoping that that's going to get done on Tuesday but he hasn't um, confirmed that it's definitely going to be Tuesday and I just have to sleep on the sofa until then. <laughs> I was trying to think if it's worth rebuilding my bed to sleep on it for two nights to then dismantle it again to get the floor refitted and then rebuild it again after and I was like I don't think so. <laughs> I have noticed that in the last like few months or even up to the last year because I let my study in the other room get so disorganized and just cluttered and gross and then obviously there was all the chaos with the floor and stuff and um, it just meant I never wanted to be in there and, and spend time in there and actually work and um, I don't want to be like avoiding my workspace because I don't like it and it doesn't work very well and it's too cluttered. So. I was trying to get away with finishing this without decluttering and reorganizing all my stuff because I have been needing to do that for a while and I've realized that that is just dumb. I need to do it and I might as well do it for this video. But I am also going to let myself make some little aesthetic upgrades and try and make this like nicely decorated and a place that I find inspiring and nice to work in. Um, as well, but I'm going to do that with only things I already own. So I'm going to maybe DIY a few things and this is the thing is that I've got a ton of art, like I, I've bought <laughs> a bunch of art that I really like that I've just never got round to like hanging up because it's one of those things that I just find it really difficult for my brain to to, to just get myself to do it for some reason. Um, even though like I have command hooks and stuff now so I can, I can do stuff but it feels more overwhelming in my head than it probably actually is. Um, but yeah, so I have like the Kallax, which is full of junk, and I have my bag of doom, which is all paperwork and stuff that I need to clear out and that I've been dreading for months. So the thing with this is it's all like papers and books and stationery and, and mail, and that has just been like, basically stuff that like piles that we build up on my desk that when I tidied my desk, I would be like, mm, don't want to deal with that right now, and I would put it in this bag. And the reason that it is so full of doom and dread is that these are not just pieces of paper, these are tasks. These are objects which have tasks attached to them. You know, it was something that I got in the mail that I needed to do, and I was like, mm, can't handle that right now. So it's a lot more stressful than just sorting through objects because you're also sorting through tasks. and. I only have a limited amount of space on my plate for tasks because that's the way I've got my system set up. And so the idea of like processing a huge pile of tasks at once is really overwhelming. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by just sifting out stuff that is papers and stuff and things that I can get rid of and then just making a pile of the things which are actually tasks that do need actioned. Um, and then hopefully that pile will be smaller and less overwhelming for the to figure out how I'm gonna actually deal with it. So, that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, the bag of doom is empty. This is my pile of items to action. This is my pile of items to um, keep and store, and then the rest is in the bin. Woohoo!
And that brief lull of satisfaction of finally having a bed again to sleep in after three nights sleeping on the sofa is where we are going to end today's video. There is more to come in this saga and that lull ended up being very brief <laughs> before there was more <laughs> minor catastrophes and chaos. Um, but I need, I need to finish this video and um, there was so much footage it was getting overwhelming so I decided to break it up into multiple ones. So you can look forward to continuing <laughs> this story and um, getting into like decluttering and con marrying my study and everything as well. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Despite the many trials and tribulations um, that I've experienced along the way with this whole process, um, I do think the room switch itself was definitely the right idea. Like it is really nice to have an actual bedroom that's just like a cozy space. Yeah, I'm liking having the desk through here as well. As a whole, the switch itself has been a success. That is what I will say. And yeah, I will leave the rest for the next video. Um, and you can see how I got on with the rest of it. If you like my work and you want to be kept more in the loop on what I'm doing, what's going on, what I'm up to, um, new work that I've created or like, you know, getting notifications about new courses or products or whatever, um, then make sure you, that you're on my newsletter. Um, you can sign up to that at rachelstephen.com newsletter. It's basically all the stuff that I used to put on social media, but I'm not on social media anymore. I actually really love putting together my newsletters, it's really fun. I get to write like some updates about, about what's going on um, and share some of my favourite resources or finds or media that I've been enjoying recently, um, do a little almanac update and stuff. It's just a good time. Consider joining that if you're not on it already. And then the other thing is I have a Patreon. I'm thinking of updating my tiers and offerings on Patreon, so I'm not gonna talk about the exact benefits here, but it's very reasonably priced. It's like a few dollars a month. Um, and yeah, you can hop over to rate you can hop over to patreon.com slash Rachel Steven to check out like what I've got on on Patreon at the moment if you're interested again in more. Um, yeah, that's, that's it really. I am knackered, so uh, I'm gonna head off, but I hope you enjoyed the video and um, I hope that you're taking care of yourself and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.